Hi everybody, a week ago we released our first video about grounding dyno, state-of-the-art zero-shot multimodal object detector, which basically means that you pass an image and any prompt and you get detections that fulfill that prompt. The model itself is pretty slow, only 8 FPS on NVIDIA A100 card, so any real-time use cases are pretty much off the table. However, in the comments and on other social media, many of you ask a question whether or not it can be used to automatically annotate images in the dataset. This idea seems really cool, so let's put it to the test. The optimal plan would be to select a small subset of your images, manually annotate them, and then automatically evaluate grounding dyno on that small dataset. If the MAP score would be high enough, we can use grounding dyno to power through the rest of the images and annotate them automatically. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to perform all of those steps, as well give you tools to do it yourself. As usual, we start in Roboflow Notebooks repository, we scroll to the bottom to computer vision skills and select the first one from the top, automated dataset annotation and evaluation with grounding dyno. Here in the top part of the notebook, you can find links to the paper as well as original project repository and few links to additional resources that we already created like our blog post and last week's video. We start quite typical by running NVIDIA SMI command to confirm that we have access to the GPU. Grounding dyno can run on a CPU, however, it's significantly faster with GPU acceleration. And just as a reminder, if you don't see the same result that most likely mean that you run in a CPU mode. In that case, you need to navigate to runtime, change runtime type and select GPU. Okay, we confirm that we have access to the GPU. Now we can proceed to installing grounding dyno in our Python environment. The project is not distributed through pip, so we need to clone the repository and manually install all the dependencies. This process is pretty fast in Google Colab because majority of those packages are already installed. However, it may take up to a few minutes on your own machine. And apart of grounding Dino, we are also installing few other Python packages that we will use in later part of this notebook. Okay, let's speed up the rest of the installation to save a bit of time. As I mentioned in the first video, to run grounding dyno, we need two files, the configuration file and the weights file. Getting the configuration file is pretty easy because it lives in the repository and we cloned it already. Getting the weights file is a bit more tricky because we need to download it separately and we will use wget to do it. After the download is completed, we'll use Python OS package to confirm that both files actually exist on the operating system and save paths leading to those files into two separate const values that we'll use during the model loading process. But before that, we just need to do one more thing, and that is to download few example images that will serve as our mock dataset that will be automatically annotated. That's it, Python environment is ready. Here comes the cool part. Let's load the model into the memory and evaluate it on few datasets coming from Roboflow universe. Okay, so first thing first, let's load the model into the memory. As I said, it's pretty straightforward process because everything we need is already prepared. We have the configuration path, we have the weights path. All we need to do is to pass those values into the model constructor, hit shift enter, and that's pretty much it. Now we need data set that we will use to evaluate our model. If you have your data set already in Coco format, that's great. I will fetch mine from Roboflow Universe. We installed Roboflow pip package at the very beginning of the notebook. So now I can just execute this cell. Here is one of the latest features of Roboflow pip package. So previously you had to log into your account, go into settings, then select workspace, then manually copy the API key. Now I can just follow the link, click generate token button, click to copy, paste it in the notebook and that's it. And after just a few more seconds, our dataset is downloaded. I pre-selected few datasets from Roboflow Universe and use them to evaluate grounding dyno. The first one is candy dataset that we used in our track and count video. Spoiler alert, grounding dyno does really well on that particular set of images. 
I prepared two ways of evaluating the data set. The first one is single image evaluation. In that case, we'll just pick a random image from a data set, run grounding dyno inference on it, and then print two images side by side. The left one with human annotations, the right one with obtained detections. Each time that you rerun that cell, Jupyter Notebook picks another random image from the data set. So you can just spend a few minutes looping through images and visually confirming whether or not grounding dyno does good job on your particular data set. Obviously, manual process like this can take a lot of time, especially if your data set has hundreds or even thousands of images. Not to mention it's pretty hard to call it a scientific evaluation of model performance, as it's pretty hard to quantify what we see on the screen. In the second mode, we'll run a full dataset evaluation. That means that we will loop over the images, run inference on every each of them, and compare the annotations and the detections. Then we'll use two very popular computer vision metrics, MAP and confusion matrix, to evaluate whether or not the model does well in the scope of whole dataset. As I said, Candy dataset is super easy for grounding Dino, and it gets a perfect score of MAP equal to one. We can also see that we got a perfect confusion matrix where all candies have been correctly detected without any false positives or false negatives. I would say that result like that is pretty rare and it's hard to expect zero shot detectors to get MAP on this level. However, I think that any time that you can get MAP score at around 30, 40, 50% or higher, it is good enough to use zero shot detector to auto annotate your images. Now let me show you a different example data set where we will get a more realistic MAP value. Okay, so we are back at the top of model evaluation section, and now we are commenting out the candy data set and uncommenting the aquarium data set. As we see, the expected MAP value is around 0.17, which is fairly low. The download of that data set may take a little bit of time because it's a lot larger than the previous one. So let me just speed up that process. The download is completed, so let's put grounding dyno to the test using images from this dataset. Let's quickly take a look at the list of classes in this dataset. So previously we only had one candy class, this time we have one, two, three, four, five, seven classes. Now we can perform single image evaluation. So as previously, we pick one random image from a dataset run inference and here are the results. It is a bit hard to see with such a small font size so let's scroll up and add text scale equals to 2 to our bounding box annotator and reset the cell. As I said before every time that we rerun the cell Jupyter Notebook picks another random image from the data set and here we see that the model was capable of detecting most of the objects however it was unable to assign a correct class to them. It is obviously incorrect detection so the MAP score goes down however we should be able to pretty easily fix that after uploading to RoboFlow Editor. The bounding box seems to be fairly correct. Uh, we would only need to change class assigned to it. Now let's run that cell one more time to take a look at another image. And this time the model is doing much better job. Cool, let's move on to dataset level evaluation. This time we have much more images to loop over, but also much more interesting results to take a look at. As previously, I'm speeding up the footage to save us a little bit of time. And when the inference is done, we can take a look at our metrics. The MAP is equal to 0.17, but I think the most interesting part is the confusion metrics. We see that most of our detections are actually false positives. That means most likely that we produce a lot of double detections. And on top of that, there are only two classes, penguin and starfish, that are detected fairly reliably. All things considered, this is example of the data set that would be pretty hard to auto annotate using grounding dyno. 
Okay, so let's sum up this section. The perfect approach would be to annotate small part of your images and evaluate grounding dyno on that dataset. MAP value tells us about the overall performance of the model of the dataset. And here we are looking for values over 30, 40%. The confusion matrix tells us about the performance of the model on class level. Here we can learn that even though the MAP value is high, there are certain classes that might be hard to detect for zero-shot detector, or that there are objects that are detected correctly, but the class associated with them is incorrect. If the result of the evaluation is positive, we can go to the next stage, which is dataset auto annotation. We confirm that the model can detect classes that we are looking for. So we just loop over the images, infer, and save the results on hard drive or send them to the cloud. So now let me show you how to do that. So as you remember, at the beginning of the notebook, we downloaded four images that we will right now use as our mock dataset. They are located in the data directory and are pretty standard for my tutorials. It's just me and my dog. Now we can define the parameters of our new RoboFlow project, as well as define the list of classes that we are going to detect on images. We have a few classes picked already, but I think we can add you more. We can go for coffee, hat, sunglasses, and let's say light bulb. Let's also change the name of the project to something more meaningful. For example, zero shot data annotation and the description, let's say docs and stuff. Now we can run this cell and the next one. And that will result in creating new project in Roboflow. So now if I go to roboflow.com, sign in into my profile, I see that I have new project in my workspace called Zero Shot Data Annotation. And for now, this is empty project. Uh, there are no images inside. Uh, that will change very soon. Now we can scroll a bit lower to the section where we perform auto annotation. Let me just close those images on the right side. Now we can run the code to auto annotate images and it will loop over the images, run the inference, save the results on hard drive in Pascal VOC XML format and send those annotations to Roboflow workspace. The processing is done and now we can go back to Roboflow, refresh the project, and when that will be done, we see that we have four images in our data set. They are annotated so we can examine the annotations in the editor. As expected, we got a lot of extra detection. So for example, dog has two bounding boxes, ear has three, one is incorrect. And funny enough, eyes of the dog got detected as sunglasses. Yeah, so we have a lot of cleanup to do, but most of the cleanup from what I see is uh, removing extra detections, not drawing the new ones. And that's all for today. I hope that you learned something. I certainly did. It took me like three days to build that Jupyter notebook. If you have other ideas for grounding dyno projects, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And of course, let me know how grounding dyno performed on your dataset. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter and I see you next time. Bye.